What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here, lady. Alright, this story's called, Racist Karen is Racist. Hey all, came across this subreddit via Red Wheel on YouTube and thought I'd post about my I don't work here, lady incident from a few months ago. Now mind you, in no way do I dress like I work anywhere when I'm off the clock. I'm typically in jeans or shorts and one of my graphic tees, a uh, sci-fi or pay and relate. Nerdy witch, but nothing offensive. And boots. Now, I'm also a clumsy. I'm also a clum- I'm also clumsy, I guess, and can trip over a flat surface. This comes up in the story. Also, sorry for the length. So my husband and I went to a local Asian market in our city a few months ago. We wanted to stock up for the second lockdown we figured was coming from the upcoming flu season, and brovid cases have been going up in the area again. We typically enjoy a more East Asian diet than your typical American. Not weeaboo, or anything, just found it a healthier diet, more flavorful, and I might love rice way too much. Anyway, this market is a seafood market, the large one, and smells like it. Again, this comes up. And they have a lot of stuff you'd not typically find in a smaller international store. We are used to being the only white folk in there a majority of the time, but the staff is amazing and super friendly. Hubby and I walk into the market, grab a cart, and we head off to get our supply of rice, noodles, real instant rice. Ramen? Not that plastic stuff marketed in American grocery stores. Are you a ramen? Like, are you- hold on, are you an instant ramen, uh, elitist? Like, what is this nonsense? <laughs> We're both eating instant ramen, okay? You can't brag that yours is better. <laughs> and juices. Hubby was looking over the various rice bags, deciding how big we wanted to go for the stocking up. And I told him I'd go to the ramen section and start looking over what they have this month. Stock doesn't stay the same necessarily, and you can find real good ramen sometimes. Sometimes. Anyway, looking over the selection, I grab a ramen that's in a bowl. Great idea if you want less cleanup after a 10 hour shift of doing tech support. And I knock about a half a dozen other packages down. Like I said, clumsy. I kneel down to collect the various items on the floor to put that and stand up to ensure the next person doesn't repeat what I did. And then she shows up. Karen. Hair, clothes, shoes, purse, jewelry, sunglasses, and overly offensive perfume. There has to be a class on this that they take on how to get the uniform right. So the cast is as follows. Me? Well, me. Racist Karen. Racist Karen's husband. My husband. Market employee. The store manager. Cop one. Cop two. Too many voices. As she walks up to me, I'd seen her out of the corner of my eye. She grabs me by the arm with her plastic claws and tries to spin me. But being a larger guy, I don't move easy. Excuse me, but I need help and you're the only American I see working here. I'm removing my arm from her grip. Ma'am, I do not work here. I'm just looking over the ramen selection. And I don't know who the hell you are, but do not put your hands on me if you want to keep them. Mind you, I do not react well to being treated as a punching bag under the best of times. I have a I am so done with people attitude most days. And I have a deep seething dislike of entitled people. I worked food service in retail for several years as well as a janitor. Those jobs really show you who people are. Of course you do. I saw you stuck in the shelf and don't you dare threaten me. I'll have your job. Ma'am, I knocked these over and was putting them back like a decent human being. And you touched me first. That's assault. And why do you foul cooters always want someone's job for being a stupid short-sighted bimbo? How dare you? Where's your manager? I'll have you fired. Again, you dumb bimbo. I do not want work here! So, you can't have my non-existent job! Now, at this stage, my husband turns into the aisle behind her. He has a look on the face of, I pity whomever set him off. Hey, hon, you alright? Yeah, just dealing with a wild, feral Karen. Racist Karen turns to hubby. Mind your business, anti-gay slur! Interesting insult. <laughs> now, another man turns into the aisle next to hubby, and by the look on his face, I'd say it's her husband, and he He's already slumping his shoulders in defeat. Apparently, this is a regular thing for the poor guy. And I also hear someone coming up behind me. I turn and it's an employee I'm acquainted with. She's wonderfully funny and always has a smile on her face and has a slight accent. Is everything all right? I heard yelling. I'm not gonna do an accent. I don't know what accent she has. Yes, you freaking racist slur for Asians. This worker refuses to help me, assaulted me, and threatened 
ruined my life! Seriously, there has to be a class at Karen University for lying on your feet. Racist Karen's husband still has a defeated look. Racist Karen, must you? Again? Why do you have to do this? Again? Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Not until you fire this anti-gay slur! Husband steps in between me and racist Karen and uses that soft, firm tone of his that can make my blood run cold. Now look here, you dumb, entitled, inbred mistake. He does not work here. He then stepped a little closer to her, and I could easily guess the look on his face because racist Karen looked like she'd seen a ghost. Now, leave him alone or he'll be the least of your worries. Racist Karen, again with the Karen University training, slaps my husband. Employee runs off, I'm guessing to get her boss. Hubby didn't flinch or anything. His military training. The th I pull my husband back as racist Karen's husband grabs his wife. That's enough! I told you before not to ever put your hands on other people! Seriously? How many times has she done that? I'm not really surprised by this when I think back. Typical entitled Karen behavior in all honesty. Employee is back with store manager behind her. Store manager from my experience. She's part of the owner's family and is second or third generation American. Oh, another different voice. What in the world is going on here? Well, dumbass Karen here thought I was an employee, assaulted me and my husband, all while using racial slurs against the employee. Racist Karen, for her part, is so red and enraged that she actually can't speak. I never realized that was a function of a Karen. I thought they always had words for any situation. I'm so sorry for this. She's off for meds. Obviously, she also needs a higher dosage. We'll just leave. No, you will not. Not if she fits physically assaulted two customers, as well as used hate speech against an employee. Racist Karen finds her voice. Oh, you freaking racial slurs for Asians are all the same. Useless. No wonder this place smells so foul. You people can't even clean properly. She turns to me and hubby. And you freaking anti-gay slur are worse. Now racist Karen had gotten out of her husband's hold, pulled out her phone, and does the most Karen thing you can think of. She he calls the police and lies about an assault on her. Fine, let's play your game. She turns to employee. Please go to the officers at the door and bring them here. Employee leaves and comes back about five minutes later with two officers in tow. Not surprising they're fast in responding. There's usually a patrol car in the lot clocking speedsters going down the street. Now, the officers don't even get a word in at all as racist Karen goes into a white woman Karen fake crying about how she was assaulted by me by anti-gay slur husband in the racial slur against Asians. The officers don't look too happy, but also unbothered by the show. I admit, it surprised me. Racist Karen's husband, again? Yeah, sorry. Hubby and I looked at each other in surprise. Officer, she physically assaulted myself, my husband, and used hate speech against a uh, store manager and employee. Also, uh, what do you mean, uh, again? She's a known problem child. Husband, again, with the firm and soft tone? And why is she allowed to run free like a feral jackal? Racist Karen tries to speak, but Cop 1 puts up his hand and silences her. Doesn't work. She goes on about how she's the victim in all this. Typical. Would you like to press charges? Yes. Racist Karen's husband takes her cell phone and purse just as Cop 2 gives her some beautiful new silver bracelets. Well, they're supposed to arrest her, not give her jewelry. <laughs> and she loses what she has left of of what sanity she had and tries to use the back of her head to hit the officer in the face. Cop 2 backs away out of reaction as Cop 1 pulls out his taser and puts her down. Oh my god. Racist Karen's husband puts her phone in her purse, hands it to Cop, pulls out his phone, looks down at racist Cop as Cop 2 is getting her up. That's it. I'm done. I'm calling our lawyer for a divorce. I can't deal with this no more. I'm unsure what language race Karen was trying to speak as she got back on her feet, and Cop 1 and 2 escorted her out. Racist Karen's husband followed, looking embarrassed as can be. And finally, having his shoulders square,
prepared and confident. Store manager apologized and asked if she could give us a discount on our groceries, and we declined. We honestly were more worried about store manager and employee being verbally assaulted instead of what we had said and done to us. We're those kind of people. <laughs> they both said that they were fine, and employee walked with us for a few minutes, and we chatted while store manager went to speak with the cops. Now, fast forward to our recent court date. Store manager and employee decided to drop the hate speech charges, but racist Karen is banned for life from their store as well as about a dozen others. Apparently, the community doesn't want her around causing trouble. Racist Karen pled guilty, but isn't serving jail time. She has to go to court-ordered anger management, therapy, and is on parole for the next four years. The judge apparently wasn't having any of her fake tears. She saw through it all and was living for it. Racist Karen was told that if she misses just one appointment for anger management and or therapy, or her parole officer reports she isn't taking her meds, her parole will be jail time. We we're also rewarded damages that Racist Karen had to pay, or again, jail time. Racist Karen's husband was there and seemed years younger since we'd seen him. They're divorced, he has the kids, Racist Karen has to have supervised visitation. He also apologized to us for Racist Karen, saying he was just embarrassed about it all, but happy with how it turned out. He had a wicked smile when he said she deserved every bit of what she got. Update to all the commentary Karens and those DMing me, please note the following. I and my husband both have mental health issues. His from his time in the military, mine from abuse, home, school, employment. I'm medicated and in therapy. He isn't, but has some assistance from the VA in terms of disability. He's hesitant about therapy as he's never had a positive experience with therapists, and he has said more than not that he's on enough meds as it is. We held back as much as we did because we both recognized racist Karen had some mental health issues. We know that sometimes the demons win. I do have empathy for her, but not in the situation she created. Also, with my own mental health, I'm highly OCD and tend to recall every detail in situations like this when I become hypervigilant with my attention. I can still recall her clothes and the clothes of my husband, racist Karen's husband, store manager, and employee. I have issues editing my own stories, even in real life, so they tend to go long. I did edit this but felt it was as short as I could get it, or as short as my OCD would allow. And being from the city I am in the Midwest, please note that people here tend to overachieve at the roles they live. When you commit to an identity, you commit without limits. This city is also committed to holding on, at all costs, to its segregation, redlining, and defining you by the neighborhood you grew up in, the high school you went to, and where you currently live. If you decide to not live by these rules, you're an outcast and seen as a non-local. I've lost family and friends by both my choices of diet and educating myself on other cultures and communities. But hey, small city, cheap cost of living, and love to have found a community of misfits that are now my family. Oh, that's very sweet. I appreciate this story. I don't know what language. I mean, <laughs> accent. German? That was German, right? That was a really stupid German accent, and you're welcome for blessing your ear holes. <laughs> anyway, uh, really Really cool story. I still don't appreciate the the instant ramen elitism. You can do better, OP. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know some brands of ramen are better than others, but don't don't poop on Marushan ramen or what was called Maruchan. Maruchan. I don't know. I'm embarrassed now. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you handled it pretty well. I'm glad you pressed charges. Hopefully she gets help. Uh, hopefully y'all get help. Hopefully y'all live happily ever after and um play video games. All right, this story. Story's called Let's Shake Things Up. I work here, lady. I'm out of work because of Brovid. Whoa, whoa, the title is a lie? What? <laughs> so occasionally I drive my husband to and from work because he has a long commute and at least once in a while I can do the driving for him. Now, he works at a warehouse type shopping center. Between 9 to 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, they have senior shopping. His shift started at 9.45. I had some shopping to do, so we walked in together. I went to grab a cart and go to the back of the line of regular shoppers waiting for senior hour to finish up and be let in. My husband kisses my cheek and walks into the building. Now, we're in our 30s, definitely not close to the 55 plus. The lady at the front of the line starts shrieking that that man was just allowed in to shop and didn't wait in line like the rest 
of us. I stopped mid cart grab and watched it unfold. My husband turns around and politely explains while holding up his name badge. Uh, sorry, ma'am. I work here. I'm just showing up for my shift is all. I'm not cutting the line, I promise. She loses it. She demands to speak to a manager since people are being allowed to cut in line in front of her and how she's been waiting for over an hour to get in. The doors didn't even open until 9 a.m. And there are signs everywhere explaining that 9 to 10 is senior hour and it has been this way for months. My husband continues to try to calm the lady down, explaining that he's an employee. His shift starts in three minutes. He's not cutting in line. He's clocking in for his shift. The person watching the door keeps explaining the same. Finally, a manager comes to the front. Karen is now blue in the face from yelling and screaming. It's time for my husband to clock in and he can't get past the front door because Karen keeps yelling, screaming, sorry. The manager explains that my husband is indeed there to work and get everything ready for the incoming flood of patrons. Karen was having none of it. My husband finally decides that in order to just end this situation, he'd use the back entrance at the complete opposite side of the giant building. Manager and husband share a very knowing look. Manager apologizes to Karen, who now looks incredibly righteous. Manager says he'll have a talk to the employee at the front door. There's some whispering. My husband's co-worker smiles a little. It's now 10 a.m. and the doors are supposed to be open to everyone. Karen starts looking very, very impatient as the manager, standing at the door, tells her he can't let the general public in until there are two people at the door. We wait and wait and wait and wait. And about five minutes after 10, my husband walks up from inside the building to the door and calls Karen on into the building, apologizing for being late as he was being held up. The laughs from the people in line behind her were just precious. She went from blue in the face screaming to red and embarrassed. The best I work here lady ever. Thought you would all enjoy a little spin on the I don't work here lady. I did. Serves that Karen right for being a dummy head. She deserves to be embarrassed. Good job guys. I'm proud of you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.